tactics. Um, it's a hard day today. As you know, two suicide bombers assessed to have been ISIS fighters detonated in the vicinity of the Abbey Gate at Hamad Karzai International Airport and in the vicinity of the Barron Hotel, which is immediately adjacent. The attack on the Abbey Gate was followed by a number of ISIS gunmen who opened fire on civilians and military forces. At this time, we know that 12 U.S. service members have been killed in the attack and 15 more service members have been injured. A number of Afghan civilians were also killed and injured in the attack. We are treating some of them aboard HKIA. Many other Afghan civilians have been taken out to hospitals in town. We're still working to calculate the total losses. We just don't know it, uh, what that is right now. Their loss weighs heavily on us all, and I'll talk a little bit more about that as we go through my prepared remarks. We continue to focus on the protection of our forces and the evacuees as the evacuation continues. Let me be clear, while we're saddened by the loss of life, both U.S. and Afghan, we're continuing to execute the mission. Our mission is to evacuate U.S. citizens, third country nationals, special immigrant visa holders, U.S. embassy staff, and Afghans at risk. Despite this attack, we are continuing the mission. The evacuation at best speed, and as of today, we have approximately 5,000 evacuees on the ramp at HKIA awaiting airlift. Since August the 14th, we've evacuated more than 104,000 civilians from, the, from HKIA. Over 66,000 by the United States and over 37,000 by our allies and partners. And that includes bringing out about 5,000 Americans. As the Secretary of State said yesterday, we believe that there are about 1,000, probably a little more than 1,000 American citizens left in Afghanistan at this point. We're doing everything we can in concert with our Department of State partners to reach out to them and to help them leave if they want to leave. And remember, not everybody wants to leave. Yesterday, we brought in over 500 American citizens. It would be difficult to overestimate the number of unusual challenges and competing demands that our forces on the ground have faced. The threat to our forces, particularly from ISIS-K, is very real, as we have seen today. I would also like to express the sense of profound pride I have in the creative, determined, and professional way that, that our forces have overcome those challenges and to deliver the, the results that we talked about in my opening portion of the remarks, the number of people that we've been able to extract from Afghanistan. It would also be remiss of me not to mention the tremendous contributions of our many coalition partners, and they stood with us on the ground at HKIA, and also the interagency and international partners who supported the evacuation. The many soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, and Coast Guardsmen who supported this operation downrange across the Central Command, the European Command, and the Northern Command areas of responsibility. Moreover, this evacuation could simply not have been done without the amazing flexibility of U.S. Transportation Command and the airlift provided by the United States Air Force. No other military in the world has anything like it. I'd also like to thank the host nations that have generously provided access to their facilities for the processing, the care, and the feeding of our evacuees. I also need to acknowledge the temporary suffering that some of our evacuees have had to endure. Please know that we continue to execute our number one mission, which is to get as many American citizens and other evacuees as possible out of Afghanistan. We also continue to expand the capacity at our intermediate facilities to ensure safe, sanitary, and humane conditions for our evacuees, while continuing to look for ultimate ways to expedite their processing and ultimate transfer to the United States or other destinations. I'd like to close out my remarks today by just taking a moment to describe the heroism that our Marines, soldiers, and sailors are exhibiting as they screen the people who are coming onto the airfield. This is close up work. The breath of the person you are searching is upon you. While we have overwatch in place, we still have to touch the clothes of the person that's coming in. I think you all can appreciate the courage and the dedication that is necessary to do this job and to do it time after time. Please remember that we have screened over 104,000 people. Finally, I'd like to offer my profound condolences to the families of our servicemen and women and Afghan civilians who lost their lives today. We have put uh, more than 5,000 U.S. service members at risk to save as many civilians as we can. It's a noble mission, and today we have seen firsthand how dangerous that mission is. ISIS will not deter us from accomplishing the mission, I can assure you of that. All Americans can and should be proud of the men and women of the armed forces who are facing these dangers head on with their international partners and all our other friends that are with us. And we appreciate your thoughts and prayers for all our service members who are carrying on this mission today. John, I'm now ready to take questions. 
Thank you, General. We'll start. But just to be clear, this, this, this suicide bomber was going through the gate being searched, checked by U.S. service members when he detonated his vest? David, that, that's, uh, that would be my working assumption. I know this, he did not get inside the, he did not get on the installation. It was at the interface point where they try to come in where this attack occurred. And we just don't know more right now. We're gathering that information. As you will understand, we'll, we're investigating that. But right now our focus really, we have other active threat streams, extremely active threat streams against the airfield. We wanna make sure that we've taken the steps we need to take to protect ourselves there. So our focus is on that. Over the next few hours and a day or two, we'll learn a lot more about what happened here. And I'm sure we'll be able to share that with you. But right now, our focus is actually going forward, ensuring that another attack of this nature does not occur. Because as you know, typically the pattern is multiple attacks. And we want to be prepared and be ready to defend against that. Court. Gordon. Yeah, General, uh, Gordon Wolf on the Wall Street Journal. Uh, can you tell us if you think that your recommendation for staying potentially after August 31st would change because of this threat stream? Uh, or are you concerned about the threat stream? Um, and also, you know, the, the U.S. military and the Taliban have been coordinating very closely uh, on various things. Do you still trust the Taliban, and is it possible that they let this happen? So as to whether or not they let it happen, I don't know. I don't think there's anything to anything to convince me that they let it happen. As to whether or not I trust them, that's a that's not necessarily a that's a word I use very carefully. You've heard me say before, it's not what they say, it's what they do. They have a practical reason for wanting us to get out of here by the 31st of August, and that's that they want to reclaim they want to reclaim the airfield. Uh, we we want to get out by that day too, if it's going to be possible to do so. So we share a common purpose. To the, as, as long as we've kept that common pur purpose uh, aligned, they've been they've been uh, useful to work with. They've cut some of our security some of our security concerns down, and they've been useful to work with going forward. Now, long term, I don't know what that's going to be. I will tell you this: anytime you build a non-combatant evacuation plan like this, and you bring in forces, you expect to be attacked. So we expect we we didn't we we thought this would happen sooner or later. It's tragic that it happened today. It's tragic there was this much loss of life. We are prepared to continue the mission. I've had an op a great opportunity to have dialogue with my chain of command on it, and I'm not going to be able to share with you what my advice has been, as as you know and understand, Gordon. But I think we can continue to conduct our mission even while uh, we're receiving attacks like this. Over.